Hello to everybody assembled virtually in Manchester, a city of beautiful memories for me. My name is Radoslav Zuk, Emeritus Professor, Peter Guo Hua Fu School of Architecture at McGill University in Montreal. My presentation is titled Image, Organization and Nine Systems of Built Form, a Conceptual Structure for Architectural Design and Research. And it's it's dedicated to the memory of the distinguished alumnus of the Manchester School of Architecture, famous architectural historian and theorist, Peter Collins, a highly respected colleague and loyal friend. Our environment consists of a multitude of elements, roads, bridges, fences, and so on. But the vast majority are buildings, vernacular, vernacular houses, barns and sheds built by trained or untrained craftsmen following examples perfected over generations, as well as urban ensembles of contiguous buildings for communal and dwelling purposes from different periods designed by highly skilled architects. Along with these, there are countless freestanding buildings, some by acknowledged masters such as Andrea Palladio, Le Corbusier, yeah. and others, who with these and other projects provide valuable examples of their prodigious theoretical ideas. When examining such buildings and texts, it becomes obvious that architectural design is a highly complex and daunting task. To have the ability to understand all the key aspects of a project, to see them creatively all at once in one's mind and to externalize them in a relevant and imaginative form is the mark of one who may be referred to as genius. This gift is given to only to very few, yet all architectural designers wish to possess it. This wish leads to pressures that have serious implications in design education. The designer's constant attempts to produce unique projects, emphasis on invention, the desperate search for a single shape as a concept end up all too often in idiosyncratic, non-contextual, shallow, and simplistic designs. Fit more for eccentric museum installations than for responsible, responsive and sensitive environmental intentions. The absence of a comprehensive design theory in the past half century or so, and the fascination with and imitation of the usually arbitrary productions of contemporary star designers have added to the present loss of orientation. However, a rigorous, a rigorous analysis of projects and writings of past and present masters may lead again to an all-inclusive theory of architectural design applicable to any project. A comprehensive design structure, image, organization, and nine systems of built form has served for a number of years as a guide in my own design practice and teaching, constantly evolving and based on a variety of studies, observations, experimentations, it allows for the application of relevant research to a wide range of the component design considerations, from the most poetic to the most pragmatic. The uh, 
conceptual design structure, image organization and built form is uh, used as a scheme to organize the design and it can be examined by research of existing projects as mentioned. So the general configuration, character and meaning of the build form are determined by an appropriate image and organization derived from the cultural, physical and programmatic context of a project. Image may be seen as containing three principal aspects, idea or party for the physical structuring of the project community, experience or appearance of the project as an object in the in the landscape and of its spaces. Symbol, the meaning of cultural, geographic and functional context of the project. The organization may be seen as being determined by three types of criteria. Usage of the project by different types of users, environment as an amenity to be enjoyed from various spaces and in various spaces, construction, volumetric and services needs of diverse spaces. The built form is based on a relevant image and an appropriate organization and is a convincing integration of the component, component ordering systems and thus a meaningful built form may be conceived. Nine such systems may be distinguished and divided into three groups, movement, space types, growth and change, space and mass, geometry and closure, services, structure, materials. As have been stated already, image constitutes the initial concept, suggesting not only possible plan and spatial configurations, but also proposing materials, geometries and other elements appropriate for the project's program and its cultural and environmental context. Organization constitutes a loose three-dimensional relationships diagram of all spaces in the program in reference to the site approximately to scale. Built form presents the configurations of all systems and their comprehensive integration to scale. It is crucial that all of the above aspects are initially stated, but allow for adjustment and coordination, thus avoiding the all too frequent linear process in which a preconceived shape is adhered to while being awkwardly planned and built. It should be stated that here the notion of system implies a coherent entity of distinct identity. According to Arnold Schoenberg, perhaps the most influential composer and theorist in 20th century music, coherence is what binds individual phenomena into forms. The artistic exploitation of coherence aims at comprehensibility. Half a millennium earlier, Leon Battista Alberti, whose projects and writing influenced so decisively the development of Western architecture, proposed his famous definition of beauty. Beauty, or we can say a comprehensive systems integration, is that reason harmony of all the parts within the body so that nothing may be added, taken away or altered, but for the worse. It is a great and holy matter. All our resources of skill and ingenuity will be taxed in achieving it. My course on analysis and theory aims at discovering universal design principles by examining the built production of recognized masters in history in recent times, according to the scheme just described. This might be considered suspect by those who believe that intellectual considerations in design stifle creativity. I had similar reservations in school and in early professional days, but soon discovered the opposite. This is what Le Corbusier, perhaps the most creative architect of the 20th century, had to say on the matter. 
the Greek, the Egyptian, Michelangelo or Blondel employed regulating lines. The man of today employs nothing at all, but he proclaims that he is a free poet and that his instincts suffice. The great Alberti was even more direct. There are some who will say that men are guided by a variety of opinions and that the forms and structures must vary according to every man's particular taste and fancy and not be tied down to any rules of art. A common thing with the ignorant to despise what they do not understand. Here on this poster of the announcement of the course, the main aim is stated. Graphic analysis of key aspects of major recent and historical works of architecture with reference to their designers' architectural theories as an introduction to the formulation of one's own comprehensive theory of design. An example of uh, such an analysis of Le Corbusier's La Tourette Monastery by Marie Orangi. It, st it starts with a uh, presentation of the external appearance of the building follows by general considerations of Le Corbusier's uh, theories. And here what should be uh, noted is that on the right -hand in the right-hand column, there is usually in bold the, uh, the investigator's understanding of what is involved, followed by a smaller font of uh, quotations, references to literature. The um, presentation includes plans and sections of the project. And then the three uh, presentations of the three image components. Idea, which may be a reference to precedence, maybe to a composition by an artist, which then suggests the general overall structuring of the main elements of the building. Experience shows the appearance of the building or possible similar appearances, which is might have influenced this particular project or in the case of design, would influence the designer, both of the building in the landscape and also the appearance of the major uh, interior spaces. And symbol is, are the elements within the building, its overall structuring, its particular details, uh, colors, materials, technology used, which are expressive uh, of the time and uh, place and purpose of the building. The organization deals with the position of the main uh, functional parts of a building with respect to each other and to the external landscape. And then the nine systems are examined on whether they have the uh, coherence appropriate to a system. And of course, this analysis can also be uh, critical uh, in every uh, one of the, of the systems of how uh, the architect achieved or did not achieve the desire uh, ideal uh, system coherence. Movement, grouping of space types, potential for growth and change, minimal in this case, but still there may be some places where it could be achieved. The building as uh, sculpture, space and mass, 
the relationship of light and configuration. Geometry, the uh, central and most important element uh, in structuring, in an abstract sense, uh, work of art or architecture. Enclosure, the um, vertical uh, surface patterns of elevations, the ceilings and the floor patterns, if there are uh, visible. The uh, services or the distribution of air and, uh, and heat, sometimes it has to be conjectured and assumed. The structural system and the material systems, the uh, relationships of various materials that meet in intersections with the ground, with uh, adjacent floors or building elements, followed by uh, conclusions and a bibliography. The design studies of a, a program, given program, to see the application of the uh, systems uh, uh, configuration are examined in a program, in this case, a conference center for McGill University on its campus on the lakefront by student uh, Xian de Aster Kai. And what we see here is uh, the idea somehow that plank of deck uh, it jutting to the water became the principal sort of shape that uh, she used. The experience is one of water, predominantly a beach. And the symbol is one of a group of uh, interested participants in how they relate to the town and to the, uh, to the water, uh, symbolic of that particular location and purpose. The organization is a relationships diagram of the program components, and it's used, it's shown here by the uh, functional relationships of the, of the program participants. The relationship to the environment, back to the campus, towards the water and along the water and the building requirements of the building fabric where small uh, elements are grouped together separated from the large ones in order to uh, be able to apply the appropriate uh, structural and uh, accommodation uh, requirements and then the proposal for movement for the grouping of space types, for growth and change. And you can see that it can theoretically expand left and right. Space and mass, three-dimensional configuration. Geometry in terms of proportional systems for the spaces and for the entire building. The enclosure, elevations in this case, and maybe the roof surface, the um, services, the heating and ventilation, and the structural system, and the materials, the tectonics uh, part of how materials uh, come together and uh, articulate the uh, building and uh, uh, bibliography. 
In summer courses in Italy, which I initiated in Venice, as well as the course architecture and geometry are paralleled by research on the most abstract and central of the nine systems. Geometric structures and determinants of formal environmental quality in architecture, with special reference to comparable structures in music. And here, just one example from uh, urban structure analysis uh, of um, green spaces in Venice with the amazing straight line relationship and proportional distances of major uh, green spaces in the Lagoon City and also their relationship to, let's say, the canal and the, uh, uh, and the, the uh, extensions of the building. In practice, I follow the image organization nine system structure and have designed, among other projects, nine Ukrainian Catholic churches in North America and one in Ukraine in association with or as consulted to a number of architectural firms. Most of the projects built have been published in the international architectural press and exhibited widely in North America and Europe, and two have received special distinctions. The Royal Architecture Institute of Canada Governor General's Medal and the State Prize of Ukraine for Architecture, respectively. I shall now try to show in capsule form the image organization nine systems applied in the design of these projects. So very Holy, to Central uh, we are in trouble here. Uh, the first project I'm showing is uh, in an unusual uh, church in uh, the Catskill Mountains, north of uh, New York City, in a small town uh, called Kerhongson, where there is also a summer resort. We see here the main body of the building on the right, the bell tower on the left in its wooden surroundings and a courtyard which which can be seen here. I don't know if you see the pointer, the, the altar area, and then an evolving uh, spiral uh, leading uh, to a glass wall which in the winter time is closed for the smaller winter community and opens in the summer for the larger community which may be standing uh, in it. The idea is uh, one of an evolving uh, community of uh, perhaps the space uh, travel uh, of our days, in other words, a reference to, to today. And the experience is one of a building in, in, the, in the forest with a pronounced vertical articulation as seen in this uh, vernacular church in Ukraine. The symbol is of the ge geographic setting, the forest, of available materials, wood, and of the characteristic uh, configuration or rhythmic uh, pattern of uh, Ukrainian churches uh, throughout history. As we can see here, uh, with the vernacular building that I just showed you in the upper left-hand side, then on the right, a Renaissance building, on the left, a Byzantine building, and more uh, Renaissance and Baroque buildings, all following a similar rhythmic structure. 
This is based on my research of abstract geometric structures as determinants of a trinsing cultural identity in architecture. So, um, I hope we're not going to lose that because uh, we also have here perhaps the symbol of the uh, Holy Trinity expressed in the equilateral triangle which evolves progressively in size from the um, from the sanctuary all around the building to uh, uh, entrance from a lower level uh, mechanical uh, pipe uh, for the equipment and then this open uh, courtyard so here we see oops, the uh, the roof structure, which consists of uh, beams uh, which are parallel to each other and provide a constant uh, span between them, but evolving and rising uh, due to the uh, distance from the outer columns, which are uh, concrete columns cantilevered from the ground, to the uh, steel columns around the sanctuary. So here we see the steel columns around the strat uh, sanctuary, the, uh, the light streaming from the tower above, and uh, the uh, ceiling above as well. Uh, and the, from the outside, we see the long stretch of the, uh, uh, I don't know what one would call it, uh, uh, colonnade cantilevered uh, which defined the courtyard and yeah. here we see some you know, as, New Yorkers as, and like, Philadelphians you know, enjoying a social meeting after the uh, service. The building has been uh, published in uh, several publications here I show you a summary in uh, progressive architecture. And uh, here, uh, in analysis uh, of precedent, it found its place next to Brunelleschi's uh, Pansy Chapel and uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, Falling Waters, I think, Le Corbusier's, uh, what do we see here? Uh, Morehouse, a Palace of Assembly by Le Corbusier, Woodland Chapel by uh, Asplund, and I already mentioned the Patsy Chapel and Falling Water, which I think is a nice neighborhood. It's been published, uh, as I mentioned uh, many times, in this uh, uh, article from Architectural Review, it was published also together with a church in Toronto. And I hope this is not going to run away from us. This is the Toronto Church, the Holy Eucharist Church. And here we see... And here we see the geometric scheme, which is based on whole number musical proportions of the um, of the great Renaissance uh, theorists. Uh, it consists of uh, the main church building, um, a Sunday school behind, and a small monastery. It's run by a monastic order on the side under the uh, bell tower entrance which is placed here uh, because of the site uh, configurations site configuration and here we see what they called abstract uh, geometry where you can take a line which goes beyond the actual building element and you can inscribe it in relationship to other elements and see that there is a sort of invisible geometric order derived from it. 
making studio approach for tactile. A view of the interior, a view of the exterior. And here, a church which uh, has received the Royal Architecture Institute of Canada the Governor General's Medal in Calgary. The overall response of students and and the Church of the Most Holy Theotokos. The Prize of Ukraine architect. And in conclusion, I would like to read you uh, a statement of my uh, principles. Significant architecture embodies the spirit of its geographic location, the intrinsic character of the people it serves and the most advanced ideas and technological capabilities of humanity at the given time in history. Therefore, such architecture cannot be impersonal and sterile, nor can it be blatantly eclectic. It must maintain the substance of a specific cultural tradition, but transform it in a, in a fresh, inventive, and relevant form. The task then is to create an architecture which responds to a specific cultural temperament and tradition, but at the same time is expressive of the given environmental setting and of the dynamism of the contemporary world spirit. But a complete architecture must also have its own autonomous presence. This implies an absolute architectural quality which transcends meaning, time, and place and its essence constitutes the archetypal being of architecture. It is inherent in the imaginative and logical conception of each of a building's functional, perceptual, and tectonic systems, in their coherent integration, and in their proper relation to the immediate environment. If of a high order, it can by its inevitability enhance human existence, give it new moving insights, and raise it to poetic heights. It is this quality which distinguishes true vernacular architecture, great historical cities and buildings, as well as the best of our contemporary architecture. Thank you very much for your attention and all the best, best wishes to everyone. Thank you.